Hi folks, so in this video I'm going to demo cross-site scripting vulnerabilities and just how easy it is to make the mistake uh, when the, and the huge security ramifications of it. So what I've done here is I've just tried to build the simplest, most basic website that you could build uh, using PHP that is vulnerable to cross-site scripting, just to really demonstrate um, how easy it is for this to happen. So basically, um, you know, we've got some PHP code here uh, and some HTML code that um, is generated using this PHP. So this happens on the server side. Um, so the server side basically receives in the, as a parameter uh, the name of the user. Um, and just to make it easy to demonstrate the session, um, like cookie stealing aspect of it, we're starting a PHP session as well. Um, and we're serving up a website that basically just says hello and then the person's name that's been fed to the website. So you can see here that if you don't know about the security problems, um, it would be very easy to think that this is very innocent looking code. There's nothing really that, um, you know, if you don't know about cross-site scripting vulnerabilities, then it's very easy to see how this code would happen. Um, but now that you do know about cross-site scripting vulnerabilities from listening to me talk about it in the videos, hopefully you can see here where the vulnerability is. Uh, essentially the problem here, well, I don't know, maybe pause the video and check that you can see where the vulnerability is in this code. So the vulnerability is that we're using the name here without any kind of validation or sanitization which means that it could include all kinds of malicious stuff. So if we um, actually start interacting with this website, um, if we do, you know, what the script expects and we put in, um, so we've got the, this is just the website that we're accessing and we're sending along the parameter of name equals world. And when we do that, it says, you know, hello world. Um, which is what we expect uh, to come from um, that website. So let me just remind us what's happening. So we're ending up with, uh, you know, the response will be hello world. And if we um, actually look at the, um, see, view the web page source, we can see that the thing that the server's generated is just a website that says hello world. You know, that's what we expect. Now, if we send along like an actual name, um, yep, that's all working so far. We can view the page source and yeah, that's all fine. So that so the server's sending basically what we send. Um, but if we send along that the name is a script, um, and This is the um, kind of thing that you see in, in demos usually is that they'll send an alert, which will just pop up a dialog. Um, and so, you know, that shows us we can run JavaScript because this has actually run this JavaScript on the page. And again, if we look at the, the source code, now this script, this malicious script has now been embedded on the page that's being served up to us. Uh, and in that malicious script, you know, we might do something else. Like, uh, instead of popping up a dialog, we might, you know, the script can access all the cookies on the page. Um, oh, it's just a cookie. Um, and so you can see here, that's the session ID. So now we could steal that session. So we could do session hijacking. All we need to do is send that along to the uh, attacker from our JavaScript and, and that attacker can now basically take um, control of this session. So whichever user was logged in. Um, instead of sending an alert at all, we could uh, do something like uh, document uh, body in our HTML equals um, something 
else. So we can, you know, replace the content on the page uh, with whatever we like. And then if we, um, you know, looked at um, the page that's being fed along, is that we have, uh, you know, we're replacing the content of the page uh, with something else. Uh, we still end up with that exclamation mark, but you know there are ways around that as well. You could write some JavaScript that waited for the page to load and then replaced it all, or whatever. But um, basically, the attacker can can do all sorts of things with this level of access of being able to inject code into the website. Um, and so yeah, going back to the original code, it looks pretty innocent, but just the pure fact that we're echoing back to the user something without validating it and sanitizing it first is all it takes to have a massive um, case of cross-site scripting vulnerability in the web page. And in terms of the categories of cross-site scripting, this example is a reflected cross-site scripting vulnerability. Uh, this simple website is that we've just written here is so simple that there is no database to store anything. Um, it's just feeding it back. But in this, uh, you know, if we had a way of storing the the name in the database, um, then it would be as simple as storing it into that SQL database and bring it back out, hosting it, um, showing it to the user would result in the same kind of vulnerability, but it would be a, a stored cross-site scripting vulnerability, whereas this is reflected.